Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to change the front brake pads and rotors for a 2010 Ford Focus with the sizes and torque specs included. So I think altogether this was like $126 in parts, which is significantly cheaper than if you take it to a shop. Because if you take it to a shop, you're probably going to be paying upwards of $300, even on an older car like this one. With all out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. So today I'm going to be replacing uh, both sides on this car, but I'm only going to show you one because it's exactly the same, just mirrored on the driver's side. I'm doing the passenger side. Um, you basically do the exact same thing, so I'm not going to show the same thing twice. So the first thing we can do with the wheel already off and the car jacked safely in the air, and there's a link down below in the description that'll show you uh, how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the uh, rotor and just turn it so it's in a more workable position. Alternatively, you could just get inside and turn the steering wheel. So we can grab a 14 millimeter socket to remove these side bolts here. Sometimes the uh, inner bit here inside the rotor will spin and you'll, you'll, you'll be turning this and it'll just be turning together. Just get a wrench and put it right here and hold on to that so we can get the bolt out just like that. So I got lucky and the bolts came out without having to hold on to this slide bit here. Go ahead and remove those guys. And then the caliper should slide off. Just work it way straight back. Don't try to like seesaw it back and forth, just up and down and towards you. And then we're gonna put that up and in such a way that it doesn't uh, fall while we're working. You can even zip tie it away uh, out of your workspace, might do that. So I can remove the two caliper anchor bolts. They're 15 millimeter and usually they're on pretty stinking tight, so. Grab a long implement just to break them loose and it'll make short work of these guys. Once that is free, you can remove the caliper anchor and then very carefully remove your rotor. Um, these things like to break toes like you wouldn't believe, so hold on to it pretty firmly. And sometimes they get stuck. They're like, you know, they're really stuck to this flange. Um, so what you do in that situation is you put the lug nuts back on just like this, but you know, for all four, put them all the way down, or maybe not all the way down, but almost. And then you can strike this surface here with a hammer all around it in like a cross pattern, and eventually it'll bust it loose. In case you live somewhere where maybe it snows, um, that's not uncommon. So then we can just remove our rotor. And we can actually throw this one into the trash we're getting new ones. So now we can actually service what holds the brake pads in their homes. So it's a good idea to kind of memorize how it went together. So it's got these clips and it's got these pads and it all comes together in one nice neat little package, which is really cool. And we can take those apart by just pushing backward on the brake pads. Now hold on to this guy. See how, how it has this little bit here that uh, interacted with the caliper? We're gonna save that. It's gonna be a special tool for later. And we can just remove those pads. Oh, look, the clip already came off. That's pretty easy. Normally, they come with new clips, but not always. You can actually clean and reuse these. Um, but if they come with the pads, then, you know, by all means, put the new ones on. So here are our brake pads. They're a Bosch unit, link down below in the description. I like these semi-metallic pads. They seem to work really well and are quiet, long lasting. What more would you want in a brake pad? Oh cool, they did come with new clips. Excellent. So we can go ahead and load up our new clips. Exactly the way they came out. No mystery there. Just like that, they have a nice new surface for the pads to go on. But before I put the new pads in, I'm actually going to very carefully remove our slides here and take the boot off the slide itself. I'm gonna get all that old bad grease off of there. A lot of the time, a lot of the time, brake pads will come with grease like this. And this is what this is for, but I actually own brake grease, so I'm just going to use that. Clean that off as good as you want, like. You could even maybe get some Q-tips down in there and really good, do a good job, but I've always found that just cleaning off the slide is sufficient. 
and then apply a nice dollop of new grease on there. Now there's kind of a special way to put these back in because some people will put the uh, dust cover on the slide and then wonder why it doesn't go back in. What you can do is just put the boot in first and then the slide makes it much easier. And you can see the action is perfect on that. So that's what you do. Oops. Boot in. Slide on there. Oh, get the excess off of there. Like that. That looks very nice. Put our brake grease away for now. Make sure there is no grease on your hands when you're handling your new pads. And some people, I'm not one of them, like to put grease right here in this channel. I'll tell you why I don't like doing that. I don't like doing that because this is already a really nice, clean, slick surface. It really doesn't need to be lubricated. And when lube gets hot, it gets runny. And if that lubricant gets on your brakes, well, it kind of defeats the purpose of having brakes. So that is my thought process. Other people feel differently. So we can go ahead and load up our new pads. And those just go into their slots. Sometimes they take a little bit of convincing. There we go. You can see this nice action right there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's what you're looking for. So on these brake pads, it looks like there's little bumps on one side and non-bumps on the other. And I found it with the non-bumps on the caliper side, the piston side. So that's the way I'm gonna put it back together. I'll put the ridged ones, the ones with the little raised bumps there on the outside. And honestly, I don't think it matters even a little bit, but I'm just gonna put it back to the way I found it. Usually if it matters, they'll be distinctively different and that's not very distinct at all. There we go. There we are. And that's in its home. Test its return. Oops. Too good of a test. There we go. And now the sole assembly is ready to go back on the vehicle. So here are our rotors for today. They are an AC Delco unit. Yes, you can put AC Delco parts on a Ford. They make good parts for a good price and the link is down below in the description. Now, when they make these rotors, they have no idea how long they're gonna sit on the shelf for. So they usually put some sort of manufacturer's grease or coating on something so they don't rust in transit or if they're sitting for 20 years, there's nothing wrong with them. If they sit that long, you just need to clean that off with either brakes brake clean or some carburetor spray because again <laughs> grease kind of eliminates the whole point of having brakes and there we go this rotor is ready for the car so we're back over at the caliper and you'll notice i have it zip tied up and out of my way makes things a little bit easier and zip ties can be your friend so what we can do is we need to retract this piston all the way into the caliper. And what, how you do that is you use your brake pad from earlier and a large pair of channel locks to grip the caliper and the piston at the same time and you can retract that. There are special tools you can buy that make this process a whole lot easier. Um, but I will leave a link down below in the description to a large pair of channel locks and that tool. Whatever you, however, which way you wanna go. And then we can just start squeezing that piston back into its home. And you know, it's not about like a ton of pressure all at once. It's more what I would call consistent pressure. So you see how that's nice and retracting. We want that all the way in its home. Just like that. And you know, it is retract. And you know it's retracted all the way when you see this surface match this surface. This surface with that one. So it is ready to go back on. So now we can put our rotor back on. Just like that. Looks amazing. 
and be careful because again these can actually fall off uh, while you're working with them. If you're really concerned about that you can go ahead and put a lug nut back on so it can't physically go anywhere. Actually if you tighten it all you know all the way like this now look the, you don't have to hold the rotor while you're putting the uh, brake assembly back on so that's kind of cool. I'm actually going to twist it this way again so that way it's easier for me to work on. And then we can just slide our caliper anchor back on like this and just get those bolts started. See, this is why it pays to put that lug nut back on because if you're having trouble putting this back on, it's because the rotor is at like this. It's like at a weird angle. So putting that lug nut back on makes sure that it's where it needs to be. I'm just going to tighten these up. So I have my torque wrench loaded up and I'm going to torque these down to 92 foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, completely understandable, I would just say two arm tight. They're on pretty good. There we go. There we are, 92. Those guys are on perfect. We can go ahead and put that on. Now, when you're putting this on, if it's like really hard to put on, double check and make sure that piston is fully recessed. And also, sometimes you get to this point and uh, it won't go on, you can't quite figure it out. It's because these slide bolts are too far out. So just push them in with your fingers and put that right back on. Grab your bolts. Just gonna start those so it can't go anywhere on us. So next I'm going to grab my torque wrench and torque these guys down to 21 foot-pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, completely understandable, just one arm tight is sufficient. See, 21 foot-pounds isn't very tight. Um, if it starts spinning, go ahead and hold on to that guy. Like I said when we were taking it off. And there we go. Not very tight at all. Perfect. So I've already put the wheel and lugs back on. And when I'm tightening these down, go in a cross pattern. There we are, but before you go anywhere, let's go ahead and torque these down to our torque figure. So now I have my torque implement uh, loaded up to 100 foot-pounds, and this you really want to be accurate or two arm tight. So what we can do is put it on the lug and go down with gravity. It makes it much easier than trying to lift it up. And we're just going to do those in a cross pattern. There we go. I even like to do it twice just to be sure. Perfect. So now we can settle into the driver's seat. Don't go anywhere just yet. What we need to do is slowly depress the brake pedal down until the full length of its travel and then up very slowly. And what that's doing is it's taking up those tolerances in between the piston and the brake pads and the rotor. And you just want to do this very slowly. Take your time. Take as much time as you need. You have all the time in the world. Lots of time. Just like that. Another pump. Let it come back up. Probably going to do this four to six times until you get a very, very firm pedal. And there we go. Absolutely perfect. Now, before you go anywhere, make sure you brake in your brakes properly. I'm going to go ahead and tell you how to do that. So you're going to accelerate the car to about 10 miles an hour in your neighborhood. Don't go very fast, 10 miles an hour. And then you're going to press the brakes slightly like this. And all you're doing is you're introducing the pads to the rotors because they're both a machine surface. And those are going to break in with each other. If you just go out there and mash them right away, they'll actually become like a glaze material on there and the brakes won't work or they'll work super poorly. And basically you'll have to do the job all over again. So make sure you break in your brakes by accelerating up to that 10 miles an hour and just tapping the brakes a little bit, get you know, back up to 10 miles an hour, tapping the brakes a little bit, back up to 10 miles an hour or so, and do that about five or six times, and then your brakes will be fully broken in. 
If you found this video helpful at all, please consider giving a like. It helps out my channel a whole heck of a lot. And you can even subscribe. That goes even the further distance. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.